7.3b, who has better ACT scores, McHenry Warriors versus Johnsburg High School? So the ACT is a test scored with whole numbers from zero all the way up to 36. We will use the applet at the link below to take samples of ACT scores, scores from MCHS and from Johnsburg High School. So I'm gonna go ahead into this applet and I'm going to click begin. So you will see this population distribution of ACT scores from our high school. So looking at this top distribution, oh, I need to reset. Looking at that top distribution, what is the shape, what is the center, and what is the variability? So you can see over here on the left-hand side that our summary statistics are listed here. Both the mean and the median are 16 with a standard deviation of 5. And we can see that the parent population does appear to be approximately normal. And over here on the right, it is normal. Okay? So we are going to go ahead and click Animated to take a sample of 5 ACT scores. So animated. There's one, two, three, four, five. And then the third graph below is the distribution of that sample data. Okay. So here we have those values and the values mean appears to be right at about 17. Okay. So I can't tell exactly what those values are, but so the estimated scores I just showed you, we took five of them and the estimated mean was at about 17. Okay, so the shape was approximately normal. The center was at 16 and the standard deviation was five, okay? So now we're gonna click animated several more times. We'll go ahead and see what happens. And then we're gonna take a bunch of samples, okay? So my next sample, I'm gonna take these five values, average them together. Here we go. We get um, a value right around 16. So the previous one was 17, this one was at 16. If I animate again, this mean is gonna be at 17 as well. Take five more values from the parent population, that one ends up being at 16. So if I were to repeat this many, many times, what do you think that blue distribution would look like? Let's go ahead and take 10,000 samples. So notice we have a mean and a median very close to 16. It's still, the blue distribution is approximately normal, just like the top black distribution, but the difference again between the two is the standard deviation. Notice the standard deviation here is less than half of the standard deviation of the population, okay? So let's answer these questions. The blue boxes make the sampling distribution of X bar. How do we know that the sampling distribution is approximately normal? So if the parent population is approximately normal, then the sampling distribution of X bar will also be approximately normal. Okay. So now let's look at the distribution of ACT scores for Johnsburg. We're going to go to click low, clear lower three and we're going to change our distribution to be skewed. So I'm going to clear lower three and change this to a skewed distribution. So this will automatically give me a right skewed distribution, which in the context of this problem means that most students do poorly and a few students do well. Okay, so notice this time the mean and the median are quite lower. Okay, so the mean and the median up here in the top left are quite lower. Um, the mean is higher because of that right skewed shape. So now, 
the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at when I take samples of size 2 and find the mean, and I repeat this a few times showing you the animated version. So take those two, there's the average. Take those two, there's the average. And we repeat this a number of times. You can see that we have a little bit more spread in this distribution than in our distribution. So if I were to do this 10,000 times, notice, while the parent population is skewed right, this distribution also appears to be skewed to the right. There is less variability, so our standard deviation does decrease because we took sample size 2, so that does change our variability. But overall, the shape is very similar, but it's less spread out. So what if I increased my sample size now to be 25? What do you think might happen? Well, I'll take 25 scores, and I'm only going to do this once because it is going to generate 25 scores randomly from the parent population, and take the average. Whew, there's one. All right, so let's do this 10,000 times. What happened? This distribution is clearly approximately normal. It is not skewed the way that the parent population is, okay? And that's because we took a larger sample size. This time we're looking at samples size 25. So when we're taking those samples size 25, it is going to be much less variability, only 1.25 for the standard deviation, but more importantly, it changes the shape to be approximately normal as long as we have a big enough sample size, okay? So when we had n was equal to 2, our distribution was skewed right with less variability than the parent population. Then when we have the shape and the shape of the sampling distribution when n was 25, we did have an approximately normal distribution show up that time. And that's because when the sample size is large enough, which we'll talk about what is large enough in just a moment, then our sampling distribution will be approximately normal. So we call this theorem the central limit theorem. And in our example, we did n equals 25. Some statisticians disagree on what that magic number should be. For our purposes, we are going to say that large enough is n has to be at least 30 for our sample size. All right, so let's go ahead here and talk about the central limit theorem. So... Big idea number one, the central limit theorem is the sampling distribution of x bar will be approximately normal when the sample size is large, and that would be n has to be at least 30, even if the population distribution was not normal. That will be true here. So once we have that, once we know the distribution is approximately normal, if we know the mean and the standard deviation of the distribution, then we can find z-score and estimate area under the curve using the same formula that we had in the previous lesson. So really the new idea with this lesson is just that if we don't know that the population distribution is normal, as long as n is greater than or equal to 30, then we can say it is approximately normal. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and complete the check for understanding here below and then come back and check it with me.